Hello there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Tuesday. That means it is time for another episode in my June Stamp Set of the Month series featuring the Car Critters Stamp Set. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you some mini things a mini scene, a mini card, and a teeny tiny shape card. It's so cute, I love tiny things. So let's go ahead and get started. These are all the images from the Car Critters stamp set that I am using for today's projects and I'm coloring them with my Copic markers. It's like my favorite thing to color with right now. So you'll be seeing a lot of it maybe next week for episode four, I will try using my Zig markers. I haven't done that in a while or my Arteza Real Brush markers. They're fun to color with also and really easy. So here I am just coloring from lightest to darkest and then repeating that to blend out the image. And I'm coloring three different cars in three different colors. So I started out with B00. My mid-tone for this particular car is B01. And then my darkest shade is B04 for a turquoise car. I thought that was really fun and it's going to be great for the card I'm putting it on, which is going to have a beach theme. So it goes well with those colors as well. And I'm going back over this a second time with each of the colors to just build up the blend and smooth out the colors. And I realized during this time that my B00 marker needs a refill. And I don't know if you've come across this, but refills are hard to come by right now. Uh, Copic is in the process of changing the packaging that their refills come in and with, uh, as with everything else, and shipping times and manufacturing things have slowed down. So go easy on your Copic markers because it's hard to get refills right now. They should be coming soon. And here I am coloring my little bears. I have a variety of E markers that I'm using to color these bears. So I have some that are darker and some that are lighter because I like variety like that. And I think that they are the cutest little bears and super easy to color. So um, you don't have to, you know, do any expert blending. I only use two colors on this particular bear, but right about here I got interrupted. Nobody's paying attention to you. Uh-oh. What should we do? Hmm? Really? Do you need to go outside? Did Daddy go outside without you? He did? Oh, my word. Oh, my. Tell me. Oh, tell me all the things. Oh, puppy. You want to come up on my lap? There we go. Little interruption to the video never hurt anybody. No. Oh, sugar baby. You just need mommy to hold you. I'm not sure if you guys have these kinds of interruptions, but this was happening to me frequently during my coloring and I paused and I found out what he wanted. It was to play. And as I was editing this video, the same thing happened. There's Toby. He just wants to play with mommy. I don't know what it is about me sitting in a chair at a desk, but he assumes that means I am ready to play. So at nine months old, he's still a baby dog to me and and I have a hard time resisting. And so we had a little playtime and then it was back to the coloring. So I'm going to show you um, the other two cars and you can see how I did the bumper, the wheels and the side mirrors as well as the headlights. And I did this, those the same on all three of the cars. So for this second car, I'm using some B markers to create a blue car. This is the color of my car. So I knew during this series, I really wanted to color one that was the color of my car. So on the previous cars that I've colored, I have started my darkest color at the top of the hood of the car and worked down to the lighter color. On this car and the next car, I had my darkest color come in from the side and the center of the hood be the lightest. Um, I'm not sure what I like the best, but I do know I wish I would have blended out this blue a little bit better with my lightest color um, for my last step. I feel like it needed a little bit more 
in the end uh, once I was, you know, looking at the pictures of it. So um, I'm not sure what I like better. What I Is it because I didn't blend it out enough or um, do I like the other blending style better? I don't know. I would love to know what you think. I'm not an expert Copic colorist. I do not claim to be, but I just love coloring with them and I have a good time doing it and I kind of experiment and sometimes I do find it a tiny bit stressful to color for you on camera. Um, and so that probably causes me to make some errors that I maybe wouldn't or rush things a little bit because um, I don't want it to take forever. But when I am not video taping my coloring, I, I do take a while to color. And I like that. I like to be able to take my time and um, just color. So I need to find that happy medium of um, coloring when on camera and coloring for fun and be able to just record that and share it with you. But I just want you to know that you don't have to be an expert to do Copic coloring or any kind of coloring for that matter. Just do what makes you happy. And if taking classes and learning expert coloring skills makes you happy, you should do that too. All right, so now I'm die cutting out all the little things. This die set has a die for the car and you can choose to either stamp your critters inside the car or stamp them and die cut them out. And the windshield for the car is a separate die. So for this one, I am leaving the windshield in. I have a mask and I'm bringing out the Life is Good stamp set. It's such a fun beach set. I'm gonna be using it for this card um, besides just putting the crab inside the car. So I masked that out so he could fit in there and I thought he is adorable in there. Isn't he cute? You'll see how the scene plays out. Um, I did color this with some R markers and lost, uh, I didn't lose the footage, but I got a phone call that interrupted the coloring. So I just showed a tiny bit of it and then there's the finished piece all die cut out. So we're gonna set all the die cut pieces aside. I will get back to the license plates on those cars later. I didn't know exactly what I wanted them to say till I made the cards. And I am stamping a circle. So this is the mini scene for this card. You don't have to make your entire card into a scene. Um, if scene building is intimidating for you, which I felt like it was for me when I first started doing it, I decided that if you start on a smaller scale, like on a die cut circle, you can just take like a bite out of scene building. But I did throw in some masking here. So I'm stamping on my circle and then I'm also stamping on some masking paper. You can see I cut that little hill out and I'm gonna save the bottom part and the top part because I'm gonna need to mask mo both sides of this hill. I'm creating a sky, some land, and some water for my little beach scene. So here's the bottom half of the mask so I can now add some distress ink to create a sky at the top of this little landmass. Little, I don't know if it's an island or just, you know, a little snapshot of the beach. And I'm using my Salty Ocean Distress Ink for that because I love this color. It's so versatile, great for water, great for sky, great for blending. And look at that little makeup style brush that I am using right there. I want you to know that I found that at the Dollar Tree. Actually, my daughter found it and was like, Mom, they have these brushes that you use. And so I bought a couple and guess what? They work pretty good. So I just wanted you to know that. Check out the Dollar Tree next time you're there for some makeup blending brushes. I did find it quite a while ago, but you know, you never know what they're gonna have there. So here we have the top mask to cover up the sky and the bottom mask to cover up the water. And now I am going to ink blend with some antique linen to create a look of sand. And I stamped the hill itself from the Life is Good stamp set in dough ink. So it's a little bit darker than the antique linen, but I think they work really well together. You can see I am tapping on some spots because I like the sand to like look darker in some areas and lighter in others. Like it just gives it a little bit of a realistic feel. And then for the water, those waves also from the Life is Good set, I used my my, um, Mer no, Peacock ink from Lawn Fawn. And now I'm gonna mask off the island. So I'm using the top half of my water um, mask. And then I'm gonna bring in Peacock 
Feathers Distress Ink to ink blend the water. I probably could have went ahead and used my dough ink and my peacock ink from Lawn Fawn. I find that their inks blend really well. I'm just used to like, if I'm ink blending, I'm using Distress Ink or Distress Oxide Ink. So that's what happened here, but use what you have, right? That's the way to go is just to utilize all the things that you already own. Yeah. All right. So I'm peeling off that mask. I had a little bit of white showing, but I wasn't too concerned about it. The water turns white as it meets the edge. I, I just left it. No stress in stamping. All right. So now I have my little critters and look how they tuck in behind these little die cut waves. Isn't that cute to look like they're swimming? So they're having a little day at the beach and playing in the water. Hopefully it's nice where you're at. It's a little cold here in Idaho. It's been rainy for like a week. So there's no beach here unless you want to play in the mud puddle in the backyard. So now I'm using the uh, palm tree from the Life is Good set. I stamped one straight, but also wanted to show you that you could curve these because it's a photopolymer stamp and the curved trees actually worked the best for my little scene. So I colored those and I had to use my scissors and fussy cut them out because once they're curved, then the die is not going to do the trick. So just take note of that before you get all excited about having your bent over trees. Just remember, you're going to have to cut them. So here's another one of those little uh, wave pieces. I'll put the name of this die set on the screen because as I'm doing this voiceover, the name of it has escaped me. I think that, um, you know, happens when you reach a certain age above 40. You kind of forget things like that. All right, so I put my scene and my car on with some foam squares and I'm tucking that into the little sand dune, stamping you are great for the license plate. And then I felt like it just needed something else. So I stamped some of the seashells from the Life is Good set and I'm coloring those in and I'll die cut them to use on my scene. Now the background for this scene is a piece of the watercolor printed paper from Lawn Fawn, and I just felt like this one kind of had the look of sand to just repeat that look in my card. So it looked like the scene is in the background and the car is in the foreground. That's why it's a little bit bigger. So I'm adding on those seashells and I feel like it just is that little something extra that this scene needed. I'm going to glue that entire thing onto a uh, kind of light and warm yellow background. There are some birds in this set. So I added those around the scene just to give it a little extra touch of uh, outdoor beach scene. And then from the Car Critters stamp set, I'm stamping thanks for steering me in the right direction in that same dough ink on the inside. And taking a little bit of my Lawn Fawn glitter pen to add a little bit of shine to this. I didn't do a lot of like glittery, shimmery, splattery things because this is um, a card that I thought would make a good Father's Day card or masculine card. I added my two extra stamped elements to the inside of this card for a little extra something. And that is gonna finish off this card for now. Later, you'll see at the end, I came back and added some music notes to it because I thought, oh, the little crab is listening to music as he took over the car while the bears were swaying. Okay. On to card number two. This is a mini card. It's a shadow box card. So this is the shadow box die set and here's all the pieces that I cut out. Those little side panels are from this pack of paper, which a very, very kind follower of my videos, Julie Wilson sent to me in the mail and I was in love with it. So it was perfect for this card. I'm also using the shadow box card mountain add-on. Look how fun this set is. I got it to go with the Yeti stamp set, but it is good for so many things and it's gonna be great for the scene I'm creating today. So I die cut the window out of my panel and then I can start layering up all the pieces. These die cut trees I'm putting in, they layer right over that outline that the window die creates. And then before I put this together, I'm gonna stamp a sentiment on there from Car Critters that says, I'd be lost without you. So cute. So you can see I've assembled all the things. The mountains have the snow. The cabin has been assembled. The critters are in the car. The side panels are on. And now we're adhering everything together with some double stick tape. And you can see how this makes a box just like that. But before we do that, we need to have a background. So I have a panel that is three and a fourth by two and three fourths. And I'm putting on some of that salty ocean ink for a sky. I like to make a sky with like 
imperfect blending because when you leave those lighter spaces and those wider spaces, they look like clouds, right? Perfect. So I'm just tucking that in what will be the background of this card. And then I am going to go ahead and insert my, um, what are these called? They're like my scenery strips. So I'm tucking them in this side piece. So the panel between the front of the card and the back of the card. I want this uh, gray panel to be in the front so it's closest to that window. The second piece I am um, putting it up a little bit higher and setting it back a little bit. And then the mountains I am setting up a little bit higher and setting back a little bit more. And once I have those adhered, then we are going to be adhering them to the other side of the card. But you can see here, I wanna make sure that they are straight. And I do a little bit of adjusting to make sure they're spaced how I want and straight. So here I fold the mountains over, peel back that sticky tape, backing and then pick it up with the other side of the card. And then I'm gonna tuck in the last two pieces. I don't like to press them down until I have everything like set where I want it to go. You wanna be able to fold this card to either side and have it lay flat. And then you can adhere the front of the card to that last panel, which you might be able to see, I forgot, I did come back into it after I stuck the car to my front strip. And then I'm adhering the cabin to the grass strip and an extra little tree. So these will be on either side of the card. So this card's really fun because you can look in and on and um, you know, from the top or from the side and see different things in this card. I decided I needed a second row of these mountains. So I, I thought three would be good and I cut off the end ones, but I really wish I would have only cut off those adhesive tabs because I'm adhering this to that sky panel. So it sticks up a little bit higher than the first row of mountains. And so now there's like just nothing on either side where I wish I would have let it go all the way edge to edge, but I don't hate it. And then I totally forgot to stamp the license plate. So I stamped a second one and die cut that, or no, I fussy cut it out. There's no die for it and glued it on top. And I like the little kind of 3D look it gave to it that it was um, stuck on top of the original, a little bit of dimension. And now I am using some trees also from the shadow box die set for the side of this card. Now you could create a whole nother scene here or you can keep it simple like I did and just add a couple little trees and that wood grain paper, the embossed wood grain on it is so fun. Thank you, Julie, I love it. And on the back side is where you can write your personalized message and uh, create this you know, as a card by adding a handwritten little note. So that finishes up this card for now. I did come back and add more to it later, but now let's make a mini card. So here's the orange card that I colored. Now I have a piece of paper that is three by six inches folded in half. I'm gonna die cut this card so the top of the car hangs off the fold. So it's not gonna die cut at the top and it creates this miniature little car. Then I can glue down the colored car on top of that and now we have a miniature teeny tiny car shaped card. I thought this would be fun as a gift tag. It would be fun to put on a card and you'd be able to open up the car. Let's not talk about what's going on inside the car. Sometimes we don't want to know those things. And so this one says, I love you. And I think I'm going to save this and use it at, you know, maybe a time to go with a Father's Day gift and uh, maybe put it on a card later. I don't know, but I think it's so cute. And I would love to make just a rainbow of these because it would just be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. So to finish up my little shadow box card, I took the um, village stamp set and stamp the birds on one side and the sun and the clouds on the other. You can see the music notes I added there to my car. And that finishes up my mini creations today, a mini scene, a mini card, and a tiny shape card. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun playing and making these projects to share with you. I will be back again next Tuesday for another episode with this stamp set that I am calling Movers and Shakers. So stay tuned for that. I'm pretty excited. I will see you all again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.